hi everybody welcome back to my channel mrs wishes i'm mish and today we are going to be talking about So we're going to do a cash stuffing 101 and i am not an expert i will tell you this right now michelle is not an expert at cash stuffing like i just started doing it myself uh last year around august time frame and i just enjoy the process of cash stuffing like it it, it saves you money time is very convenient and i'm learning i'm not a financial advisor i'm no way in any shape or form here to tell anybody what to do with their finances but a budget is always good to have so if you want to learn what i know so if you want to learn what i know about cash stuffing stick around because guess what you're here i'm here we're here together. Let's learn about cash stuffing. Okay, so we're back. And like I said, I'm going to teach you what I know about cash stuffing. I'm not a financial expert, but this is something that I've learned how to do in my processes. And I'm going to show you the way that I do it. And there are multiple ways. So we're just going to go over the basics. So in order to begin what we call, what people call cash stuffing. Is you need to have something to stuff. And obviously if it's called cash stuffing, you're going to need cash. Now. Cash can be anything from a penny to a dollar. It does not matter how much cash you have, as long as you have some cash to stuff. And what they mean by stuffing is you will be placing it inside of some sort of vessel. You could put it in a bank. You could put it in an envelope. You could put it in a sock. You could put it in a shoe. Most people, the the most people do is put it in envelopes and if you have regular envelopes the white mailing envelopes you can start out with that and you just label your envelope what you're going to put and what you're going to save for but before you do that you have to have some sort of funds and i use my income and your income is anything that you get from an outside source that brings you money so it could be a side hustle it could be your job it could be an uh an allowance it's anything that brings in some sort of funds um and then what you do with that is you have to break down the funds into what you need and into what you want because everybody we need things and we want things things you need you have to have those done first and then you can get the things you want so when we're cash stuffing people start off with what we call a budget And a budget is when you take your income and you separate it into the things you need, your necessities, and then the things you want. So, of course, we first have to take care of our wants. I mean, sorry, we have to take care of our needs to survive. And our needs would be rent. That would be the roof over your head. Then you would have to have your utilities, like uh, utilities, like uh, your water, your gas, your electric, your your uh, trash, 
things like that and then you would have to have food you have to have these three things to run a house that is providing you with what you need you have to eat you have to have utilities you have to pay rent it's just how life is it's either a rent or a mortgage however but you need to have these things these are the three major things now you can also add gas into it or um like a pass like the for transportation so we'll just put transportation because you have to get around that you don't have to have this but you need these three things but this is also a necessity in some areas you can't do anything if you don't have transportation now the thing we want we want uh let's see your internet your phone uh things you want you want to have your internet you want to have your phone you could have you can have rent utilities food without having internet and phone this is an important part but these things are major so these are things that co would come next into the the list of things you need my budget and this is mish's budget okay so it splits off into it splits off into the things that i want i'm sorry into the things i need so i have categories like groceries i have gas and over here groceries and gas are the major two and um okay i have my rent have water and this is a water bill my water bill I have uh, an electric bill I have my groceries my gas my rent my water bill my electric bill and I think those are the major those are the major items uh, the major things that I I have so these things have to be paid first. So these would I would consider my necessities. On this side, we have what is known as sinking funds. You have long-term and short-term. Short-term sinking funds are things like... Uh, Short-term things are things that you have to save for, but you're going to spend. So it would be something like um, a school, school, school for your kids, like school fees for your children. Or I want it better than the weekend. Weekend, take it back to what we said. Just friends. I don't want to tell you something new. So, after you get through your sinking funds, you will come over here and you will begin to save. Saving is uh, something like for an IRA, retirement, those are some of the things you want to have in your for your savings this is what you put your money into so when you get to a certain point in your life you can buy these things and still have money to put back towards your sinking funds so savings is something that you want to keep that will help you when you can't get a steady income and it can help you you can have a retirement fund you can it'll it'll aid in this process so you want to have some sort of savings even if you just put a dollar in your savings every time you get paid and you just keep saving 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 
So I'm going to go through some of the things that I have that I need to. This is the way my paycheck works. So let's zoom in a little bit here. So when I get my paycheck, I have to pay my bills. Then I have my wallet. I should have put that ahead of that. I have my wallet where that's where you have your gas and your groceries and those items. And then I go to my subscriptions with such things like Canva and, you know, your, your, uh, your cable TV, you have different subscriptions for those things. And then I go to my credit card and loans. So I do have credit cards and loans. Then you have my daughter's college. And after that, we have our sink, our savings challenges. And that's some of the categories that I have that I use my paycheck for. And I calculate for those every two weeks. This is my credit card so far. These are my credit cards and loans. I have one, two, three, four, five, six credit cards and two loans currently running. Uh, here's my subscriptions. Subscriptions, I have Roku. I have CapCut. I have Canva. I have Amazon Music, which I'm getting rid of because I did not know it went up to $11. That's definitely... Um, going to be taken off. I have the Microsoft account that where I store my videos from, from from CapCut and such. And then I have my Etsy shop. So it's about $50 worth of subscriptions. It'll be down to about uh, $30, $38 or so when I get rid of this Amazon Music. But yeah. So those are some of the subscriptions. All right. And in my wallet currently, and these are some of the needs would be so far I have let's see groceries I have gas I have health so that's anything you buy in your house like aspirins and medicine and you know Tylenol things you need for your personal health um I have uh, my kids you know they have their school things and such and then I have household where you purchase things for your home i have my pets so i have to pay for them on a on a regular basis and dining out is extra now if you don't have money for any of those other things dining out is not something you would do you would just grocery shop and you wouldn't have a dining out but that's i have the dining out and then i have a shopping and shopping is for things like clothes and anything that i might find that i need for my shops my etsy shop you know like papers and laminate and stuff like that but that's for my wallet and now it's the bad part <laughs> the bad part is my spending i do have my business in here as spending so i do spend for my business i have a uh, car registration in here i have any cash app items but cash app i use to pay my rent and my water but I also use Cash App to pay or uh, to provide money for friends and family. Um, any of my withdrawals that I take out, I have Amazon, I have Etsy, Temu. These three things, including the Dollar Tree, are some of my things that are not or habits that I would like to break. But you know, they are part of my life. And here are my bills. So, my bills, I have my electric bill, my water bill, my rent, my car insurance, my cell phone, and my car payment. Those are my major bills. And then, like I said, I put everything together and I put it all on here. Oh, wait. I also like to save. And when I save, I put... I use saving challenges to save and saving challenges. If you don't know what they are, they can come as scratch offs where you scratch and you put this amount of money into an envelope and you save for a certain item. They can be games like we have things like Saveopoly and Alice in Wonderland. So it could be a game that you play. It's just a fun way instead of just throwing money into an account. It's a fun way to save. So I have my 26 weeks challenge 
so with this challenge i have to put money in here every week for 26 weeks and that is how many pays i have in one year so every time i get paid i put 26 dollars in the 26 week challenge so it's 26 for 26 i have my 100 envelope challenge and sorry knocking things over and in this challenge um you have 100 envelopes and you put money in each envelope now According to what people do, there are different ways to do the 100 envelope challenge. You could put the number on the envelope. So let's see what we have here. So the number on the envelope is the amount that you can put in the challenge. So if it says one on the front, you will put $1. If it says three on the front, you will put $3. Okay, so how I'm going to do it, because when you start getting to these higher numbers down here in the 50s, I think I am going to start around, I'm going to stop my challenges around 45 and then from 46 on to 100, I'm going to be adding these numbers together. So let's go back here. Let me show you what I mean by that. So when I get to, let's see, I'm in the 40s. So I think I can do my, my budget allows for me to get to about 45. So let's see, I hit 45. We'll have the $45 in there. But when I get to 46, I'll be adding the four and the six together and I'll put a 10 in here. And then I'll be adding the four and the seven together and put an $11 and $12 and I'll keep going like that. Now, when I get to the 50s, I might split it and do 25 and 25. Oh, because adding this five and zero together is five dollars. That's not enough for me to do. So I'm probably going to have to split it and put 25 in here, one pay, and then 25 another. And it's kind of like an IOU where I have to fill those up. But we will get to the 50 eventually. When I get past 50 and I start hitting into the um, 60s, I'm going to start adding them together again. Six and six is 12. Six and five is 11. You know, we're going to do that seven and five. We're going to start adding these numbers together. And that's what we're going to do. Because I just want to finish the challenge and I don't want to feel defeated. Because sometimes, you know, you, you get these challenges and you want to say, oh, I'm going to put $75 in there. I'm just going to keep it real. Michelle don't have $75 to put in an envelope that's going to be sitting in, sitting in the bank. Well, I don't really put cash in here anyway. I use either. I'll have, let's see what I have in here. I'll show you guys. So all my money is in the bank. If you see money in here, it's prop money. This is not real cash. This is copy prop cash. So I do have some cash in here, which is prop cash. But all my money is in a high yield savings account. And it's drawing interest as we speak. Michelle wants to make money with her money. And then I also have placeholders, so $2. I do have this $2. is not in this envelope, but it is in the bank. So these are all fulfilled up until I think I got to $6 so far. And then, you know, once I get paid, I can start filling up these again. But that is my 100 envelope challenge. That is another challenge you can do to make saving fun. Then we also have... Um, I have a 12 month challenge and for that one let me get my challenge saving challenge envelope so and for that one this is something that i created in my etsy shop currently is where i have all 12 months and i roll a dice and whatever it lands on say if i roll a a three that would be january february march and then i would go to march and this is march and then it's all threes because March is the third month. Then I would roll again and we got another three. So I would fill in three threes, which would be nine. And that's what I would say for the 12 month challenge. And that is um in my Etsy, currently in my Etsy shop. That is something I like to use as a savings challenge. And when you say for saving challenges, you can put all the money in the envelope for the challenge itself, or you can dedicate it to something. So you see that I dedicated some of these challenges to different things i got my car in here i got vacation so whatever challenge i play that is where the money will go to as that's how I've, I've dedicated those to certain things okay what are other savings challenges we have i have my 12 month i have uh the 
12 month holiday and I have the 12 okay so that was the 12 month holiday and I also have another 12 month challenge here this one is not in my Etsy shop but it will be this is uh, each month is symbolized by one of the little scenes here so let's flip them over we have January February March April showers bring May flowers June is summer July is is a uh, yeah July is my little bee oh I'm sorry July is my little bear for the 4th of July July August is the fall and then you know it's September and October so we have October we have November with the little pilgrim bee and then so forth and so on. September is the little bear going to school. Anyway, this is another cute way to say. So on this challenge, you can just you can color in a whole honeycomb, or you could do each one of these little circles. However, you want to you could color a flower, you can color the heart, and for every one you roll. So I usually roll a dice for these. And so if I roll this dice and I get a one, I would just color one heart, and that would be what I would say for that challenge. And so forth and so on for each month. Okay, so that's my monthly challenge. I call it the monthly cute challenge. And the other one is the holiday holiday challenge. Then I have my Mrs. Wishes Aristotle Adventure Challenge. And this one I haven't I took it out my shop because I'm going to put in a PDF for this one, but it's four games in one. It's a roll and save. So you roll and you count the spaces, kind of like a board game. Then you have the roll and save, which is where you roll the dice and you mark it off. It's kind of like a shut the box with dice. Then you have your tic-tac-toe game where you play with the colors, play against each other. And I believe that is it. So that's one, two, three. Three games in that one. So with this PDF, you will get three games. And um, that will be in my shop eventually. Coming in March. I'm going to have quite a few more things in my shop. Okay, so I also have other things in here that I have in my shop. Currently, I have my taco and beer challenge. And it comes with a colored dice. And what you do is you roll the dice. And what other color comes up is the amount you save. So you can roll the yellow. It could be for the cheese. It could be for the meat. Whatever you want. But I have it for the color. So yellow is six. So you would save six dollars. You roll again. You got orange. Orange is fifteen dollars. So you save fifteen dollars. And so forth and so on. So that's my taco and beer. Taco and beer is in my Etsy shop currently. Okay, let's keep going through the challenges. We have my, and this is one of my hot sellers, big time sellers right now. I sell, I sell these all the time. It's the Shut the Fridge Challenge. And it's kind of like shut the box. But instead of shutting the box, we have to shut the fridge. So when you open your fridge, of course you have your food items. But on the other side, you have your numbers. So this is how this game is. You have to roll the dice. And you come up with a four and a two. You will mark off your four and you mark off your two. You roll again. You got two ones. So you will mark off the two because one and one is two. So you have to use both dice. Now we got a five and a three. You mark off the five and a three. And you keep going until you can't roll anymore. And this one, I wind up with a five, a one, and a nine. So that was $15 that I had to save for that row. So you keep rolling until the numbers cannot be marked off. And you roll, you can check through each um, line. Stop whenever you please. Sometimes you can get the whole line off and shut the box. Now when you actually shut the fridge... You can put in whatever total you amount you want. But this is another challenge that is currently in my shop. Uh, let's see what else. And I'm getting off track here because <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys. Okay, so those are challenges that I have in my shop. We And scratchers you get from other people's Etsy shops. So always go to other people's Etsy shops. You can find plenty of ways to have savings challenges that you can use to make saving fun.
Okay, so let's go back. Because you know I get on some savings challenges and I'll be on those all day long. So anyway, <laughs> you have your budget. Let's get back on track here. You have your budget. You have to pay your bills. You have to pay your bills. Let's get my income sheet back out here. I pay my credit cards and loans. I have everything in my wallet, like my gas and my groceries. So I just put wallet. Then I have my subscriptions. Then I have my savings challenges. And I have my daughter's college. Um, and I think those are the things currently that I... This is all that I use for my income right now. So let's say that I have... Your income is $1,500. $1, so you get $1,500 for your income. And you pay your bills. After you pay your bills, say your bills like your water, your electric, your rent. They come to five hundred and thirty dollars in a in a just well let's put eight hundred to be more realistic. So we'll put eight hundred and thirty dollars. Then you have some credit cards. So we have some credit cards here. We're gonna put our credit cards. This is your debt, your credit. We're gonna put that as a hundred and fifty dollars. Then you have your wallet, and in your wallet is where you have your your gas and your groceries and all of that. So with that, let's say we're going to have our wallet at $200. Then after your wallet, <clears throat> so once you pay for these things, because now we have our, our bills are covered, our debt is covered, and then our our needs are covered. So your groceries and all of that. So we have everything is covered. So you have to subtract what you have. So if you get paid $1,500, you minus the rent and such. thirty. You minus the credit or your debt. of us use savings challenges to save and it makes savings fun so that's where i would get my that's where you get the money for your savings challenges is after you pay your bills and your debt and your needs and your subscriptions then whatever you have left would go to your savings challenges to get to those higher long-term things that you want in your lifetime um this was all over the place and like i said i am not no anyone's financial advisor i'm just here to tell you how i do so you have cash stuffers that will go to the bank and they will take all of the one the 1500 out and they will put they will have envelopes for every category on here envelopes 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 and they will put money in every one of these actual cash break it down and put it into each one of these challenges that is a 100% cash stuffer. Then you have like a hybrid stuffer. And hybrid stuffers, so you have your 100% cash stuffers. Where they take every dime out the bank and they allocate it to every one of these things. Then you have your hybrid stuffers. Like me. Well, you have your hybrid stuffers. Where you take them some of this money, like these three things here. They will stay in the bank and they will be allocated digitally you'll pay for your groceries you'll pay your loans you'll pay your rent you'll pay all of this digitally and then when you get down here to your um savings you'll pay your subscription everything that needs to be paid for life living would be paid through your digital then when you get to your savings challenges some people like to actually have that that physical cash that they two one ten twenty thirty i know i love to watch people count money and that's the thing so that's what we call a hybrid stuffer where they'll get cash for just partial and then they'll put the cash in the envelopes and they'll save the money for these items instead of saving for everything like a 100% cash stuffer. 
then you also have what is a digital stuffer a cashless cash stuffer they're cashless and um cashless cash stuffers they use prop money they use uh monopoly money they use paper you cut take a piece of paper and write a dollar on it those people are cashless they don't use cash but they still stuff envelopes for everyone that you can stuff for every one of the categories or like i said you can be you could be a hybrid cashless stuffer where you use your digital for these things and then you use your prop money for here which is me i am a hybrid cashless cash stuffer so in my major bills i put into the bank using my uh, digital credit card and then or i mean my digital card and then down here savings challenges i use prop money but now that i've been using prop money for a while i don't think that i like that i think that i am going to become a hybrid cash stuffer with real cash for my savings challenges i am going to start cash stuffing with real cash at some point in 2024, I am going to actually go out and get cash. So you have to make a budget. You have to make a budget. You have to get your needs out of the way. Then you can take care of your debt. Once you get your needs and your debt out of the way, then you can save. And, and saving leads to paying off your debt once you pay off your debt you'll just have your needs and then you can do things you want once you pay your debt off and um you save you're paying off this debt that's the point the point is to get rid of your debt so you can get things you want you can go on those vacations you can buy those clothes you can get your nails and your hair done etc you, you have to pay for the needs. Get rid of your debt. You save. Use that money towards debt. And then you can get the things you want. And that's just how life works. That's how life works. You have to budget. You have to have things. You have to pay for your needs. Some people don't have debt. But if you have debt, you, this is what you're saving. You're saving to pay off the debt to get the things you want. So your budget pays for your needs so that you can save to pay off your debt to get to the things you want so we can live a better life and we can have a future without debt. And that is what I want. I want a retirement life debt free where I can go to my trip to Japan. I can go and buy clothes on the shopping sprees and I can get my hair and my nails done and just not have to worry about credit card people calling me every weekend and so forth and so on i'm hoping that this i noticed this thing was all over the place but i'm hoping that somebody got something out of this and if you did that's great because that was the point of this whole video so if you really understood what i was saying and it helped you i'm glad and i hope you come back because this was just something that i threw together in a in a spur because that's how I do videos. I'm a spur of the moment type person. And if I have something on my mind that I think other people need to hear about things that I know that may help you, I'll throw it out there. So like I said, if you like this video, please go ahead and subscribe and hit that like button and hit that notification and then comment in the comments and let me know if I missed something. Maybe I missed something or um, you don't agree and we can figure out other things that you might want to do with your budget But everybody has to start out with some sort of budget in order to make these things happen So with that said at the end of all my videos, like I always say I'll see you seeing me when I see you Saving money Holla